What is happening? Welcome back to the Let's Go Win podcast. We're here to help you be happy, healthy, wealthy, and get better every single day. We're going to be talking about a big subject today. Why? And you've heard that before. I know start with why Simon Sinek made popular and you hear that terminology. But the gentleman I'm about to bring on, he is known as Dr. Why. And he has actually come up with a way to get to your why in such a fast time. Dr. Gary Sanchez, known as Dr. Y, is an acclaimed international speaker, author, dentist, and inventor. He discovered the nine whys and created the Y operating system, founding the Y Institute. His innovative discovery tool helps individuals uncover their why in just five minutes. Dr. Sanchez aims to empower 1 billion people to find their personal operating system, enhancing their intrinsic motivation and personal brand message for a fulfilling journey well i was definitely blessed to meet this man in person and now i get a chance to actually get to know him even better gary man how you doing brother jam thanks for having me man i'm looking forward to this it's gonna be who'd have thought that just walking by you and seeing you in the middle of that scorching hot event uh we finally got to talk and saw so many connections, so it worked out great. I'm really blessed with where I decided to sit and have my, I think I was having a cup of tea in that blazing sun, which makes zero sense, but <laughs> anyway. Well, brother, you uh, your system is amazing. I, uh, I got a chance to take it. You yep. and I ran through that, and I think why is one of those words that obviously has become very uh, important, you hear people talk about their purpose, their why. Why? <laughs> why is that word so important to you? Where did you come up with this where you're like, this is my life's work and I am just going to dive in? Well, you know, actually, this is never anything I set out to do. I was a dentist. And uh, it's 30, I, I graduated from USC Dental School in 1988. I hate to even say that year. But the advice that I was given at the time was build a great product and people will come, right? I bet many of your listeners have heard that. Go out and do the best job you can and people will naturally and mysteriously find their way to you. And so I did that. I spent 20 years reaching the highest levels you could go to in dentistry, working with the best mentors, going to the best institutes, building a beautiful practice, buying all the technology. I had all the great, all the stuff. And I still blended in with everybody else who said, yeah, I'm a dentist too. And man, that drove me crazy. You know, I, I'd never worked so hard at something and not gotten the results that I thought I would. And so I went out and uh, I was either going to quit or I was going to find something better. So I went out and hired a coach and I hired a guy by the name of John Asraf. Uh, John Asraf. Are you familiar with him? He was I in am the movie. Yeah. in person, but I certainly know his work. Yeah. So for those of you listening, if, if you've ever seen the movie, The Secret or read the book, The Secret, he was in there. Um, he was the guy with the vision boards. And but anyways, so through him. I learned how to use the internet. I learned how to do websites, drip campaigns, and SEO. And so I, so I could get my message out to the world. But the only problem was, what am I going to say? Right? What am I going to say that separates me from everybody else who does what I do? And what I didn't want to do was sound desperate or like I needed patience or like I, I didn't want to sound bad. So I didn't say anything until one day I heard him interview Simon Sinek. So you're, I'm sure you're familiar with Simon Sinek, right, Jim? You've read, you've seen the TED Talk. I mean, I've read a, a damn near every book he's put out, if not all yeah. of them. So yes, I, I'm very familiar. Love his work. Yes, me too. So I watched his TED Talk. Um, I listened to the interview, then I watched his TED Talk, and I watched it again and again and again, and probably watched it 20 times. Read his book multiple times, and I said, "Man, that's what I'm missing. I have a great what, but I don't know my why." So I became obsessed with it. And I called Simon and I said, Simon, I need you to help me discover my why. So he and I spent about eight months going back through my life, looking for clues, trying to figure out my why. And when I finally figured it out, my, my why is to find a better way and then share it, to find a better way and share it. And once I realized that, my life made so much more sense to me. I have a lot of patents and products and inventions that are all better ways of doing things. And so in my practice, we stop talking about what we do, crowns, ridges, fillings, all that fun stuff. And we start talking about why we do what we do and what we believe, right? We believe, we believe that life is better when you have great teeth. In fact, you can't have a good life with bad teeth. 
And as we started talking about why we do what we do, that's when my practice really took off. We went from just getting by to having abundance, from four to six new patients a month to 35 to 45. And in our practice, a new patient was worth about $6,000. So it was very significant. Most fun, most satisfaction, most revenue, most enjoyment. And so as that was happening, I started getting calls from other dentists that said, hey, can you help me do what you did? Because I was in a lot of different study groups. And so I went back and figured out what Simon was trying to do, and I made it better. So instead of taking six or eight or 10 months, I could sit down with you in about an hour and help you discover your why and then build your messaging, marketing, and branding all based on your why. And so I started doing this for anybody that would let me. I did it for thousands of people for free all over the world on stages, on Skype. I'd bring somebody out of the audience on stage with me, discover their why in front of the audience, and then build their messaging and marketing branding all right there on the stage. And I did this for thousands of people, and I started to notice patterns and trends and similarities. Just like anything that you get good at, you see the system behind it. And I figured out that there's only nine different whys. That was the most important thing I figured out because once I knew there were nine whys, then we had an end point. Then I could teach people how to do what I was doing. Then I could get more data. And with that data, I was able to develop the algorithm and write the software where in 2016, we launched, we launched the why discovery that just found, finds your why. And then in 2021, we launched the why OS discovery, the why operating system discovery that finds your why your how and your what and build your message for you. And it takes about eight minutes. And so why that was significant was for two reasons. Number one, I've done more why discoveries than anybody in the world. And I was only about 70% accurate. 30% of the time I got them wrong. I got my own wife's why wrong. <laughs> and so it, it, um, if everything you do, your passion, your purpose, your direction is all based on your why, pretty important to get it right. And the other thing was, if if I'm the only one who can actually help someone discover their why, how big of an impact am I really going to have in my whole life? Right. right. So I had to have a way to scale. And that's what it's allowed us to do. So that was the, the very quick version of how the heck I got to this. And as, my, um, as I started doing it more and more and more, um, it became more of what I wanted to do. Yeah. And dentistry yeah. became less of what I wanted to do. And that's how I got here. Yeah, you know, I have so many thoughts based on what you said. Uh, a, the, the one thing I want all of the us to listen to, you reached out to John. This is a big name. This is not somebody that's just like, yeah, look look him up in the, you know, yellow pages or, you know, just Google him and you, there's his phone number. So you, you put in some work. And then Simon Sinek, again, another large name. And the reason I bring this up, Gary, is clearly... When you're set on something yep. or when you have that, you have no problems really chasing after that opportunity or seizing that opportunity. Can you talk a little bit about that? And we'll dive back into the why. Yeah, but I yeah. just, when you said that, I thought, you know, that's uncommon. People don't just reach out to John and be like, hey, man, I want you to be my coach. And John's like, okay, Gary, sounds great. <laughs> you clearly have an ability to to – to, to seize an opportunity that not everybody does. Yeah, I think it's it, it comes from pain because if you're in enough pain, you'll you'll make things happen. You know, I think my next book, I'm going to call The Power of Pissed Off because when you get pissed off and stuff's not going your way, think of what you can accomplish and what you will do, right? And and I, I had worked so hard. Uh, let me give you an example. So most dentists take 20 hours of CE a year. That's what we're supposed to take, 20 hours a year. I was taking 250 hours every year. Our, we had half-day staff meetings every week for years to develop our policies and systems and processes. And so, you know, that's a lot of time and money. I mean, a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it wasn't like I was just kind of somewhat into it. I was really into it. And we weren't getting the results that I thought we should or could or would. And so I was highly motivated, highly pissed off, and I was going to make something happen. So I think that's a big part of it. And then once I learned about why, Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why, I couldn't get it out of my head 
but it became one of those concepts that just pisses you off because you want it. You can't have it. You don't have a way to get there. There's nobody to help you. And so you fumble along with it. And that's when I just said, forget it. I'm just going to call the guy who, who developed this and see if he'll help me. And he said, sure, happy to help you. But it was before he was as big as he is now. You know, his TED Talk had come out and he was doing well with it and he was speaking at a lot of events, but he was still willing to help me, which I don't know if you could get that today, but uh, I was highly motivated, as you can tell. Yeah, no, I, I love it because, again, when it sounds like when you have a vision, you have a, I guess it was more of a question for you, like, yes. wh- how could I really serve and scale? Like, with your goal of empowering a billion people, clearly Gary can't, well, maybe he could do a billion, if he's pissed off enough, maybe he could make a billion phone calls, <laughs> but no, to create the system to say, look, I know I can only do so much. I only have 24 hours of my day. How do I create something? And what I think is amazing too, Gary, is we can wrap our brain around nine whys. Yeah. I think everyone can say, okay, because when you say what's your why, that's a huge freaking question, man. Yeah. But if you say, here's a system, and by the way, it's only coming down to nine, I think it gives people an opportunity to breathe and say, oh my gosh, it's not so overwhelming. And there is a way to find this. And I know people listening right now today that are wondering what their why is. And I will tell you, I built and sold three companies before I really figured out my why, my purpose. Um, were you surprised that it, it only came down to nine? That's pretty, That I think that's remarkable. Yeah, so how that happened is I was working with a big group of lawyers. There was 50 lawyers in this room in, um, in Florida. Um, and this is probably... Gosh, at least 15 years ago, no, 10 years ago, probably. And I was asked to come speak at this event. And the guy that put it on said, you know, you'll probably just be on stage like 45 minutes. Come talk a little bit about why. Maybe bring somebody out of the audience on audience on stage with you and discover their why. And I said, OK, that's fine. So the first person I bring up and we discover is why. And then somebody else raised, hey, can I go next? 14 hours later, I'm still on stage. Wow. Still on stage working with every single one of them. And halfway through the day, everything else they were going to do, they canceled. And every one of them wanted to know what is my why. And about halfway through the day, though, this one lady, this attorney raised her hand and she said, hey, uh, Gary, how many whys are there? No. I don't know. I've never thought of that. And that's when I started keeping track. I'd already done many, many why discoveries before I kept track of them. It just came from somebody asking me that question. And then the same nine kept coming up over and over and over. Now, for all the listeners, every one of us has all nine whys. One of them is more dominant than the rest. And that's the one that becomes your why. The second most dominant is your how. And the third most dominant is your what. So can we use you as an example? Yeah, brother, I took the test. I I thought it was powerful. I'd love to. So JM's why is to simplify, to make things, take the complex and break it down to its simplest form so that it's usable, so that it's doable, so that it's possible, so people can make progress with it. How he does that, though, is by challenging the status quo and thinking differently, pushing the limits, thinking outside the box, looking for things that others don't see. And ultimately, what he brings is a trusting relationship where others can count on him, where he's the trusted source. He's the one that others go to and say, will you help me? And he grabs their hand and takes them to where they need to go. How does that feel to you, Jam? No, I mean, it's uh, as I told you, I, I, I'll just say it again. Yeah, man, it's it's spot on. I can't help but be simple. That's just the way my brain works. <laughs> uh, my mom would definitely tell you I can't help but challenge you. Tell me, hey, this is what you need to do. I'm immediately going to do the other thing. <laughs> and trust to me is uh, is all we really have. So uh, it totally makes sense. I'm not sure that I know how to perfectly apply it yet, right? Yes. Because this was new information to me not not all that long ago. But it definitely feels right. 
Yeah. And so for all you listeners, what, what the YOS discovery will do for you is give you the words to articulate the feelings that you may have now about what your why is. Because if you can't say it, then you don't know it. Kind of, sort of think I might maybe know it does not leave you anywhere. You can't do anything with that. So you need it clear. You need to be able to say it. Because when you can say it, that's when you can use it. So how do you use it? A few different ways. So first off is self-awareness. So I know one of the goals of the podcast is to help people perform at a higher level, right? Win. Well, in order to perform at the highest level, the first step is self-awareness. You got to know who you are. And the first step in self-awareness is knowing what your why is. So if you've ever, you know, that saying you can't steer a parked car, right? And it's sometimes very hard to get a parked car moving. And it's the same thing way in peep with people when they're stuck. It's hard to get them moving. They don't know what the next step should be. What is my first step? Where do I begin? Knowing your why is that first step. Now, there's a lot of great assessments and tools out there. And so many of you have probably tried them, right? Myers-Briggs, Colby, Strength Finder, DISC. Uh, yeah, we, we go on and on. And they're really good. And we like them and use them. But those are how you take action, not why you take action. If you start with your why, then the how will be even more valuable. If you start with your how, you end up going how to how to how. And so the first step, the uh, first part is self-awareness. You knowing you, so you can answer the question, why should I choose you? So if I'm looking to make things simple, if I'm looking to think outside the box and I want somebody that I can trust, not going to be any much, anybody much better than you, JM. That's why I would choose you. Does that make sense? No, it totally makes sense. And I, I want people to understand, here's the beauty of this. And, and again, this isn't to say the other assessments aren't great. And as you said, it's that's the how, I, uh, I yep. think, is, what, is how you said that. This test literally, in that scorching Phoenix sun, <laughs> I took it in, I, I'm not going to say five minutes. I think it was about eight, eight minutes, maybe, or so. And... To arrive at this conclusion, which, by the way, I've done other genius things. I'm not saying they're the same, but it's interesting. One was almost three hours long and arrived almost at a very similar thing. I mean, not verbatim, but very close. To do it in eight minutes on my mm -hmm. cell phone. And as you said, I just happened to walk by a friend that was chatting with you, rudely interrupted and said, who's this guy? You're like, hey, man, here's my thing. Check it out. And I'm like, cool. And, and now we're here. I think it's remarkable to do it in that short a period of time. Does that surprise you? Because you talked about 14 hours in Florida working with all these attorneys. To get it down to that that such a not simple, I won't say that, to to take something that can be that complex to something that can be that that efficient. Did that surprise you, Gary, that you could get it to that to that point? Yeah, so let's talk about that for a minute because, uh, so everybody listening, my why is to find a better way and share it. How I do that is by making things clear, first for myself and then for others. And then ultimately what I bring is a simple solution. And so that's why, JM, you and I will get along really well. And simple is a great word. I, I would have been happy for you to use the word simple. But, but behind the scenes, there's over 4,000 possible question options in the YOS discovery that you took, over 4,000. But what I did was I used logic-based programming. So your next question is based on the one you just answered. So everybody, most everybody takes a different set of questions because it's based on how they answer and then it double checks itself as it goes. But here's something else that I, I don't know if you know if we talked about this or not, but it actually goes all nine levels deep. So it not only tells you one through three, which are your why, how, and what, but in the background, in the, in the software behind it, it goes all nine levels deep. So we know what's super important to you, we know what's kind of important to you, and we know what's not important to you at all. And so what that will do 
is allow other people to get to know you in a very deep way, very, very quickly. So I don't meet with anybody on Zoom, on a call, in person, unless I know their YOS. Because what are we going to talk about? What sport team do you like? Where'd you grow up? How many kids you got? Tell me about your business. But if I know your YOS, I'll know exactly what's going on great with you, what's not going very well for you. I'll know how to help you. I'll know what's, you know, so many of the things that are going on with you, I will know in advance because I know your why, how, and what. And that's where it becomes really valuable in knowing your team, building your team. So first is knowing yourself and for businesses, then it's knowing who do I have on my team? Do I have the right person in the right place doing the right thing? Because there's a very big difference between being able to do something and loving what you do. So let me give you an example. One of the whys is, well, your how. Your how is the how of challenge. But if that's your why, the why of challenge, then you don't want to follow the rules. You don't draw inside the lines. You don't want to be told what to do. You don't want to do it the same as everybody else. You're going to do it your own way. You're going to push the limits. You're going to think outside the box. But oftentimes people with that why are very good with numbers. So let's say somebody shows up to your business, JM, and they fill out the the resume and they write down, I'm good with numbers. And you're looking for a bookkeeper. Wonderful. I just found my bookkeeper. He's good with numbers. We're going to hire him as a bookkeeper. So you bring him in and you find out after the fact, you know, that his why is challenge. Well, he's not going to, how long do you think somebody with the why of challenge is going to want to be a bookkeeper? Not long, brother. No. And they're going to run out of energy and then they're going to start causing trouble and they're not going to follow the rules. Unless you want creative accounting, it's probably not a very good person to have there, but you wouldn't know that until after you hire him. But if you know what their why is first, you'll know right away, no, that's the wrong one for that. So the other, another way to use your YOS, especially for business people, is building an inspired team. Put the right person in the right place where they love what they're doing, so different than just being able to do it. So your why, by the way, JM, is an incredibly valuable why for businesses. It's an incredibly valuable why as a coach or a consultant or someone that's going to help or mentor businesses. Why do you think that is? Well, I'll give you my answer, and then I'm curious to hear what you think. Uh, For instance, I help businesses double or triple in revenue, and I've done it historically. If we are together for a year or if I take equity in your company, you're going to double your, your revenue. It's just that's the way it goes. But when I tell people how we're going to do it with the one sheet, literally getting everything down to this one sheet, people look at me like I have three heads. That can't be that. In fact, Gary, what they always say is it can't be that simple. So my answer is that, that it is that simple, yet it's hard for people to grasp that. So I don't know if I'm close, but that's kind of the dialogue that I have with uh, companies. You hit it. You hit the nail on the head. It's because you're able to simplify things to where it's actually doable. So why is simplicity so valuable, JM? To me, it gives you clarity. You you know where you're going. People are in, you know, rowing the boat in the same direction. It's not haphazard. It's like it just makes life easy and we can point our energy in the right direction. And what happens when things are overly complex? Uh, for me, it, it makes me almost shut down. Like I just, I don't deal well with it. I don't understand it. I don't like it. I probably won't use it. You got it. So imagine a whole organization that has things simplified for them or a whole organization that has things made more complex for them, which one's going to be, you know, move faster. And so, yeah. Uh, Yep. Obvious. I don't mean need to answer. Yes, you're absolutely right. And that is why. People desperately look for somebody with the why of simplify because you love doing it. You've done it your whole life. It's second nature to you. You see things the rest of us don't. You simplify things like most of us can't. 
but we need it. It's that thing that we know we need, but we can't do very well, and that's your specialty. So that's why, as a coach, consultant, partner, whatever it is, simplify is incredibly valuable. And it's very rare. You have one of the more rare whys. And so it's great to have on a team. If, if you have one, somebody with a why of simplify on your team, you're very fortunate. But you got to know it and then use it. Let, put them in a place where they get to have an impact. Right? Put you in a corner where you don't get to do much. You can't have much of an impact. Put you in a leadership role. Incredibly valuable. Incredibly valuable. Does that make sense? No, you know, it's again, this is one of those moments where you're like, gosh, you just made it simple for me to understand, which is uh, what I benefit from. Where were you like 10 years ago when I was trying to explain this? Um, You know, I guess my question or my thought is, so you talked about the nine. Yeah. And the why, I do we argue with the fact, is that... Number one, is that the most important? And then before you answer that, does it rank, you know, in order down to nine of importance? I'm just curious, Gary, because I I could cliche say, why is your everything? And I actually believe that. I truly, when I do a goal, I have a why right behind it. There's no goal up there that's just like, okay, go lose 30 pounds. No, why do I want to lose it? So I do believe in that to my core. I'm curious from your vantage point, do you rank them one to nine and look at it that way? Or how do you work with them all together? Yeah, let's and let's also define why, because what you brought up there is really important to distinguish between. So first of all, when I'm speaking at events around the world, I, I may say something like, um, you know, when you know your why, what you do has more impact. And invariably, somebody will come up to me and say, yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. In fact, in fact, I know my why. I agree with you. And I say, hey, great. Well, what's your why? And they'll pull out their phone and they'll show me the picture of their kids on their phone. And they'll say, well, this is my why. My kids are my why. That's why I do what I do. Or they'll show me a picture of a little red dress and say, you know, I got to get into this dress in six months. And so for a wedding. And so that, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Or my business is my why. Or my new book is my why. Now, what they're talking about is very important, but that's a short term motivation for doing things the way they're doing it. When their kids grow up, where the business moves on, they lose their why. What we're talking about is something even more profound. Why you operate the way you operate. Why you do everything you do. Why you were put on earth. You were put on earth to help the rest of us simplify things. You do that everywhere you go. You can't turn it off. You can't stop it. You didn't choose it. It's just the gift you were given. And if you don't know what it is, it's hard to use it. It's like gravity, right? If you don't know, if you don't believe in gravity, well, it still affects you. If you don't know your why, it still affects you. You just don't know what it is. Well, now you know what it is and you can now start looking back and saying, well, shoot, that's what I did here and I did that here and I did that here and I did that here everywhere along. That's what I do. And so your why is very important and everybody talks about why. But just as important is how you do it. And also as important is what it is you ultimately deliver. And so, yes, why takes precedence, but the other two are just as important. And then it goes all the way down to number nine. So I'll, I'm going to bring you up here. I should have had it in advance. And we'll look at your number nine because it's funny, one of our coaches we had our YCON event uh, a few months back, and she brought up this, um, the nine, the ninth one. And she kept calling it the divine nine. And your last one, uh -huh, which makes sense, your number nine is mastery. So let's talk about mastery for just a minute. Mas seeking mastery. Mastery is um, they like depth and breadth and detail. They dive in incredibly deep. They have an insatiable desire for more knowledge, more and more and more. They look for the little thing, the nuances that make the big difference. For you and I, it's three steps to cook, uh, steps to cook a scrambled egg. For them, it's 28 steps. They know everything about every step, right? It's like you want three bullet points. They want 30 pages, right? So 
you if I if I gave you a thirty page report, what's the odds you're going to read that? Yeah, zero, uh, <laughs> zero. I mean, if you gave me a three bullet points, yeah, yeah, man, I'm yeah. in. Thirty pages, not a chance you're going to read it. me either, me either. So, w- your number nine, one, one of the you know that saying, you're only as strong as your weakest your, your link. Weakest. Yep. So she brought this point up. She said, when you know you're number nine, if you can work just a little bit on your number nine, it brings everything else up. And I'd never thought of that. So if you maybe go a little bit deeper to one page versus three bullet points, maybe that would bring everything else up even a little bit more. And that's why it's so critical to know your divine nine. What's that ninth one? What is my weakest link? I work a little bit on that. Not out, not a lot, but just a little bit. Bring it up a little. Everything else goes up. And it was really interesting to see. That is interesting. You know, as you're talking and you said something earlier that I thought, gosh, I, I don't want to forget this. So we are born with God-given gifts. Uh, there, you know, people say you truly have a purpose. Uh, my question to you, Gary, in doing this, as people evolve and change, does their why, does it shift at all? Because I will tell you, for me, I, I'm i a simple kid from Montana. I've said that since, I mean, it's just true, man. It just, that's who I am. I don't think my, my simplify will ever shift. For me, I'm curious if you've seen other people, or is this just an innate thing that, it's just who you are, man. This is the DNA that was printed and and as much learning and, and growing and meeting people and changing, but this is your God given ability. Does it shift? I don't think so either. I, and I can I can say the same thing for me. I have always been about finding a better way. You have always been about simplifying. And when people and and what I'll often if somebody asks me that question, I'll say, Well, what do you think? What would your mother say? Mm-hmm. Like, no, my mother's have always been like this. And so uh, I want I want to throw a scenario by you because I know you do some uh, speaking as well. And I want you to imagine you're standing on stage in front of an audience of a thousand people and somebody raises their hand and they say, hey, um, JM, is your why God given or is it environmental? I'm going to go. What's that? I was going to say, so no matter what you answer, you're going to upset half of the audience. (laughs) So how do you answer that? Because it happens to me all the time. And if it doesn't happen to me, I actually bring it up now. But um, you got to it's, it's an interesting thing to think about. If you answer one way, half the group is upset with you. And if you answer the other way, the other half's upset with you. So how do you answer it? That's, how do I answer it? I, I <laughs> thank you very much for the question. <laughs> In my opinion, it is a God given talent. <laughs> and how I answer it is I just say yes. Because I say, um, I don't know. Mm. I can't prove it one way or the other. But the point is, it doesn't matter. All mm. that matters is that you know what it is so that you can use it in, in your life. And so I have what I believe, but I can't prove it. Yeah. No, I, I see, like this. I, I, I really, I, and I don't mean to derail the conversation if you yeah. want to dive deeper on that. I really want to. If I'm a business and I'm listening right now, and I know you have a pretty big deal, whether you talk about it or you don't, but uh, that you've been working on and and you continue to help these companies. If I'm listening right now and I'm like, all right, Gary, I I like this. I'd love to know my why, my how, my what. How, How do I really learn? Is it I have to take a complex course to learn how to really use it? Do I need Gary by my side to teach me the whole way? When I get this report, how do I plug it into my sales team, into my software company, so that we can all work harmoniously? I, I, maybe I missed that part, but I want to make sure that my audience is like, "All right, dude, I like this. How do yep. I how do I start to implement?" Yeah, great question. So uh, we've done this with many thousands of companies now, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, and I have about two hundred and fifty coaches that are part of our, our why society, we call it. And um, ideally, you would want to have a coach come in and help you because you'll get the most out of it. 
could you try to do it on your own? Yes. And do we have online courses to help you with that? Yes. Um, and but it's always kind of the outside expert. And if you bring in a myself or a coach, depending upon the size of your company or, or a coach to come work with you, we can say those things about you that are hard for you to say about yourself. So let me give you an example. JM is now in front of his team. He's got, you know, 10 people on his executive team. And every why has wonderful things about him. And every why has challenges that come with it. And the way to think of those challenges is like this. A little bit of chocolate is good. Too much chocolate, not so good, unless you're a chocoholic. Or you could say the same thing with salt, right? A little bit of salt's good. Too much salt, not so good. The right amount is what you're looking for. So the right amount of simplify is great. But if JM is too oversimplified, doesn't want any fluff, doesn't want any discussion, just wants to be direct and to the point, doesn't have any tact or whatnot to his conversation, how is that going to affect the rest of the team? Like, well, I guess let me ask you, maybe you've been in that spot where you just overly hit him with your simplify. How does that work? Uh, it's absolutely a skill I've had to learn. And here's what I would say to in leadership specifically. Uh, I believe great leaders have empathy. I lack that early in my leadership career. I see the problem. I hammer down on what it is and I offend. It, this was definitely my journey, brother, where to that point, because I wasn't giving some of the love, recognition, putting myself in their shoes, I've had to learn that. Yep, exactly. And so you have, if you can imagine a sliding scale or whatever of simplify, you were too much. I'm going to pound down on this and get yeah. my point across. So you said, well, that didn't work very well. Let me try a little less. That didn't work so well either, a little bit less. And now you've got, ah, I'm in my sweet zone, sweet spot, right? And so it's the same thing with everybody. But I can say those things about you in front of your team so they have a new perspective of the gifts that you bring versus understand the actions that you they see and the narrative they create. So an example would be you and I meet for the first time, and, th and this would be your listener and anybody, you meet for the first time, you, you kind of look at their hairstyle, their facial hair, jewelry, whatever, clothes, what's in the background, all... You know, all those kinds of things. And you create a narrative around who you think they are, right? You see them and, oh, this is who they are. I can tell by just looking at them. But how often are we actually correct? And how often do we know any depth? Is there any depth to it? So none. you're really, none. Yeah, yep. none. Yep. You really don't know. But once you know their YOS, you will know exactly who you're talking to. You will know exactly how they think. You will know there. So your decision making process, JM, is your why, your how and your what. Let me give you an example. If I had an idea that I wanted to propose to you. And I don't bring it to you in a simple way, I give you 30 pages. I show you how it's pretty much the same thing that everybody else is doing, and it's not going to create better relationships and create more trust. How do you how would that work for you? Yeah, it's not going to go well. Uh, thank you for coming, Gary. Have a good one. Yeah. But if I come in and I show you, JM, let me show you how this is simple, easy to use, doable. People that you share this with, they're going to be able to do it right away. Let me show you how it's different than anything they've ever seen. And let me show you how it's going to not only make you the trusted source and the trusted expert, but it's going to create better relationships within the organization. Well, now, how do you feel about it? I mean, yeah, man, you just you just spoke my language. I, I'm in. That is your decision making process. That is how you make a decision. Is it simple? Is it different? Is it going to create great relationships? That's how we make decisions. And so if I know that going in, I'll know exactly what words to use, exactly how to present it, exactly how you need to hear it in order to feel valued to feel heard and make a decision. It gives you all that information right up front. So with, on one last, one last thing on that, imagine that I'm share, showing you, I'm a realtor and I'm gonna show you a house. I know exactly 
how to present that house to you. But your spouse may has their own YOS. And if I know that, I'll know exactly what she needs to hear in order to make a decision. So it gives me the insight in order to help you move forward and make decisions, connect with you, you know, how to make better connections faster. Yeah, no, and that was really where my question was going. So I'm guessing some of these, I go to sales because to me, sales is yeah. life, right? Everything we do, I'm talking to my wife, I want to go golfing, I'm selling her on why I need to go golfing. <laughs> so, but I'm guessing a lot of your clients are utilizing it to give them a leg up in sales to really... You gave the real estate uh, example. So they're, hey, client, before we go out, I really want to understand you better. Can go ahead and take this eight minute, 10 minute, whatever number you say, uh, Y dot iOS and uh, dot, dot OS, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, take this so that I can make sure your experience is pleasurable. Is that kind of the idea? Is that is that how they're presenting it or, or how are yeah. they doing it? Yeah, great question. I'm glad you asked that. So- Everybody knows what the platinum, uh, the golden rule is, right? Treat others the way that you want to be treated. But what are the odds that you and I want to be treated the same way? Very low. So that's why we use the platinum rule. Um, and the platinum rule is treat others the way they want to be treated. How we do that here at Keller Williams is by utilizing the YOS discovery. It's a tool. It's going to take you about eight minutes to complete, but it's going to find your why, your how, and your what. And if that's all you get out of today, it's going to be a, a great day. But it's going to allow you and I to connect on a different level where our time together becomes even more valuable. I'll know which houses to show you, which ones not to show you. I'll know what's important to you within those houses. I'll know so much that I can really be of value to you and helping you find the right home. So just, you know, well, then we just let them take it. Yeah. No, oh, man, I I have to tell you, because I like simplicity, yes. the fact that you built something that is, again, it's simple. The user interface, everything is simple. I'm sure it was complex to build. That that I have no doubt. Yes. But I have this, this not, uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. And I'm like, damn, why couldn't I have freaking come up with something like this? Um <laughs> Gary, we're flying through this thing, man. I wonder what I didn't know enough to ask you. Uh, you you've done so much. I love that you're you're getting this out to over a billion people because for people to understand themselves, oh, this is why I act the way I do. I mean, really is remarkable. What didn't I know enough to ask you, brother, that you want to make sure to share with the audience as we start to to wrap up? Well, at the beginning, you asked me a question about you know, how I got to be doing this. And I told you part of it. What actually happened about three and a half years ago, I was at this event called Zozobra in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And it's kind of like a Burning Man thing, but not a, not a three-day drug fest or whatever. This is like one night uh, thing, a uh, big celebration there. And so I was there for a buddy's 45th birthday party and we kind of ate and drank too much and woke up the next day with a headache. I got up, went to the front desk. They gave me a couple Advil, went back to bed. No big deal. Well, one of the Advil didn't dissolve and it lodged in my GI tract and it burnt a hole right where there was an artery. And I started to bleed internally and I didn't know it. I live in, I live in Albuquerque, which is an hour away. So I drive back to Albuquerque, just not feeling good. I actually went and worked out at the gym, came home, and then I just started throwing up blood and blood starts coming out everywhere. I go to the ER. And it was a busy weekend, so I ended up having to wait for like 11 hours. By the time they finally admitted me, my blood pressure was 60 over 30, and I'd lost half my blood. And I wasn't in a private room, so I, I got up to use the restroom, and I locked the door behind me. And then I passed out and hit my head on the sink and ended up, luckily I woke up, blood everywhere, pushed the door open, passed out. Somebody found me, luckily, and uh, ended up. Next thing I know, I wake up, I'm in this bed. I got the two pads on me. They revived me off to surgery, tried to get to the bleed. They couldn't get to it. So they um, did a CAT scan to see if I was still bleeding. And when they did the CAT scan, they blew out my arm. And my arm starts filling up with blood clots and I have bleeding in my GI tract. So the doctor comes in and says, we have to stop those blood clots because if we don't and they get to your lungs, you're going to die. But if we try to stop the blood clots, we can't get to the bleed. 
so you're going to die. And I thought, man, I cannot believe this is how I'm going to go out from a freaking Advil. Luckily, my phone rings, and it's a buddy of mine that's a uh, cardiologist there at the hospital. And he said, hey, Gary, I didn't even know you were in here, but I see what they're going to do, and I don't like it. And he said, I'm going to take over. So I was in the ICU for nine days. A lot of, a lot of crazy stuff happens to you in the ICU. And obviously, I made it because I'm here. I had to go to bed one evening with an IV of heparin um, and hope I didn't bleed, which I didn't. So then they were able to treat it. When I finally get out and I go back to my practice, my dental practice, and one of my patients who's in his mid-80s takes me aside. And he said, hey, Gary, you know, um, you got a second chance on life. And when you look back on your time here, uh, when you get to be my age and you look back on your time here, are you going to be glad that you stayed a dentist? Or are you going to wish you'd taken this why thing to the world? And I said, I'm going to wish I'd taken this why thing to the world. And so he says, well, then you know what you need to do. And so that's when I sold my practice. It was doing great at the time. I walked away, didn't know what I was doing, knew nothing about software, didn't have the software at that time, made a lot of mistakes, wasted a lot of time and money. But I can tell you when what you're doing with your life is in line with your why, your how, and your what, you will have unlimited passion for it, unlimited energy for it. And will it make your life easier? Maybe. Maybe not, but you will love what you do. And that's, it'll be so much more fulfilling than doing something just to do it, just for the money, just because you have to. And so now we're three years down and you and I met when things have come a lot further, but a few years back wasn't quite like this. So, but I still had the energy for it. And... You know, I, it's amazing. Thank you for sharing that story. And unfortunately, it, it does come at a time for people when, gosh, you almost didn't have the chance, right? And to lie on your deathbed and think, I regret not pursuing my true passion and purpose in life. Ah, man, what a shame that would be. And thank God for that patient, man, to just say, hey, Gary, what, what are you doing, man? I mean, I love you as a dentist. Thank you so much. But come on. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. You know, let me add one last thing to that, if we have time. Yeah. Um, if you're listening and you're trying to figure out your passion, your purpose, your direction, what you should do with your life, where you should spend your time. If what you choose to do is in line with your why, your how and your what, you will love what you do. You will have passion for what you do. And passion is the fuel that gives you the energy to pursue your dreams, right? We talk, without passion, you give up. So if you want to figure it out, or you're trying to help your kids figure it out, or you're trying to help a friend figure it out, start them with knowing their why, how, and what, and then you'll be able to very quickly tell, what are you thinking about doing with your life? Well, is that in line with this? If it's not in line with it, you can do it, but you're going to run out of energy. Why not pick something that's in line with it? Because then you know you're going to love it. And then you'll persevere. And you'll make it to where you're trying to go. I know I'm going to make it there. I know I am. I don't, how long it takes me, I don't know. But I know I'm going to get there. I will not give up. I'm loving what I'm doing. And it's just so much fun. Every day I get up loving it. You know, and so if that's the life that some of your listeners are looking for, you're living it. You're proof it uh, yourself. You go in and work with a company, you simplify, you get them to think differently, and you become their trusted source. Doesn't get any better than that. No, you're really, the- I love it. I, I absolutely love it, and I agree with you. And I hope every listener listening gets the opportunity because far too often people don't. And so for you to find that, to have the near-death experience, to literally shake you up enough to say, come on, man, let's go, let's go really, uh, you know, follow that passion and purpose and be in alignment with your why, your how, and your what, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, we are unfortunately out of time, Gary. If people wanted to, they want to do the YOS, they want to, man, I, this sounds pretty freaking amazing. What's the best place to find you and really just plug in with what with what you're doing? Yeah, go to whyinstitute.com, W-H-Y-Institute.com. 
The YOS Discovery is only $97. It's not expensive, but it is priceless. And if you, uh, in fact, in fact, use the use this code podcast fifty. It'll give you fifty percent off. So it's only fifty bucks for you. You will have everything we just talked about for fifty bucks at yinstitute.com. Just use that code when you check out. You'll get it at half price. And um, reach out. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on all the social media platforms. Um, but if if the one thing I want to leave the audience with is if if the YOS is not the way you choose to go, just make a decision to figure out who you are because that'll help you make every other decision that you need to make. Start with who am I and it'll be the rest will become much easier. Yeah, it's sage advice, brother, for sure. And thank you for coming on and sharing, man. It's the, This is a subject I'm passionate about. Uh, I was blessed, like I said, to meet you, take it. You've walked me through it, and I just, so I'm honored to have you on the show, brother. I'm just grateful. Yeah, thank you so much for letting me be here and and share this and be part of our movement. You know, it's a movement to get to a billion, so thank you for being part of it. Well, guys, I mean, look, let's support the movement to a billion. Uh, You know, you know somebody, share this episode, make sure they hear what Gary's doing, why it's important, not to use that wise, you know, cliche, (laughs) but... It's really important, and you can help someone really understand how they operate and really understand some of their God-given or their environmental uh, whatever it was that created the way they operate. But please share this out with someone. It's really powerful. He's a great dude, and I'm just so blessed to have him on the show. Until next time, remember your mindset matters. I appreciate you all. We'll talk to you soon.